Welcome to the Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport Access Training Course. You are watching this video because you will be operating inside the Airport Operating Area, or AOA. At Rocky Mountain Metro, the AOA consists of the area inside the airport fence. So whether you're accessing your hangar or going to work, you will need an access badge. This video is tailored for those both with and without aviation experience in that we will discuss items specific to Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport as well as cover the general knowledge needed when operating around aircraft. Over the course of the video, we will discuss the requirements for obtaining an airport badge, proper gate access and use procedures, the movement and non-movement area, and the rules and safety for the AOA. Obtaining a badge is an easy process and it starts with the need for one. Only those with a need get a badge. Before obtaining a badge, your application must have a valid authorizing agent signature on the back of the document. An authorizing agent may be a designated employee of a business or a hangar owner who is granting others access rights into the AOA. Additionally, you must thoroughly fill out the top portion of the front of the application and have provided a valid driver's license. If you are operating your personal vehicle in the AOA, you must enter that vehicle's information in the middle portion of the application. If you are unsure of who your authorizing agent is, please notify airport operations. Finally, you must take and pass the access control test. This test covers many of the important topics discussed in this film. Once you successfully complete this course, you'll be issued an access badge permit for any vehicle you will be operating inside the AOA. An airport badge will cost $50. Replacement badges are also $50 in the event you need one. Also, if you are receiving any parking passes, the cost is $20 per vehicle. Rocky Mountain can only accept card payments and therefore no cash is accepted. Upon receiving your parking pass, please place it on the inside of your windshield on the lower passenger side corner. If you replace your windshield or your vehicle, you will need to get a new permit. Once you have a badge, you'll be fully authorized to operate in the AOA. We ask that you keep airport operations updated if your contact information changes. Also, if your badge is lost or stolen, you must contact airport operations immediately to deactivate it. If you no longer need your badge, you can return it to the airport operations office located inside the terminal. So now, we will discuss the proper gate access and use procedures required when accessing the AOA. All access gates read an electronic chip embedded in your badge to identify the user. All you have to do is wave your badge in front of the reader. If the reader successfully scans your card, you will see a green LED light appear. This indicates access is granted and the gate will open. If you have scanned your badge successfully and the gate still does not open, please contact airport operations immediately. This could be a problem with your badge or with the gate itself. When passing through a gate, ensure the gate is completely upright before passing through. Any damage to the gate or to your vehicle will be the responsibility of the user. Here are a few simple procedures required when using a gate. The first is to always wait for the gate to completely close after you have gained access to the AOA. This is to ensure unauthorized personnel do not gain access to the AOA by slipping in behind you. In this real-world example, a user failed to stop before the gate completely closed. As a result, an unauthorized user slipped through the gate and into the AOA. Whether you're entering or exiting the AOA, this procedure is required each time you pass through a gate. Please note that the gates are designed to sense the metal of your vehicle using a ground loop embedded in the pavement just before each side of the gate. You must pull your vehicle beyond these loops in order for the gates to close. If you are on these loops, the gate will sense your vehicle and it will fail to close. The second procedure required is to always badge in each time you access a gate. If a user ahead of you already opened a gate, you must still badge into the reader in order to record your access. In this example, both users badged in and the responsibility of the open gate is on the last user. Once the second user clears the gate, 
the first user is free to move on and the last user to badge in becomes responsible for the open gate. Another required procedure is to always be on the lookout for unauthorized access. If a user attempts to gain unauthorized access by slipping in behind you, please contact airport operations immediately to report the unauthorized user. These individuals may be entering the AOA under malicious circumstances. Additionally, your badge also allows you to escort guests into the AOA. When escorting a guest into the AOA, badge into the card reader and pull forward. Always make sure your guest remains behind your vehicle at all times. Once you and your guest are through the gate, stop and wait for the gate to close. Please remember that you and your guest must pull far enough forward to remain clear of the ground loop so that the gate will close. If you are already in the AOA and you want to escort a guest into the AOA, you must first exit the AOA, then position your vehicle in front of the guest's vehicle and escort the guest behind you as normal. Never allow a guest to access the AOA by driving your vehicle up to the gate on the exiting side as seen in this example. Before escorting guests into the AOA, it may be important to brief your guests with basic rules and safety of driving into the airport operations area. Remember, you are solely responsible for your guests and they must remain with you and under your control at all times. Additionally, never lend your badge to another individual for any reason. Now that you know how your badge grants you access into the AOA, we will now discuss the most critical aspect of the AOA, that being the movement area boundary line. The AOA, which encompasses everything that's inside the airport's fence, is divided into two distinct areas, the movement area and the non-movement area. In this diagram, the area shaded in red is the movement area, and it contains runways and taxiways. The area shaded in green is the non-movement area. These areas contain ramps, roads, hangars, and vehicle parking. These two areas are distinctly divided by the movement area boundary line. The movement area boundary line is made up of two lines, one is solid and one is dashed. The non-movement area is on the solid side of the line, and the movement area is on the dashed side of the line. The most important thing to remember is that you cannot cross the solid yellow side with the dashes behind it. Even aircraft must stop before crossing the solid side of the movement area boundary line, and then they have to contact air traffic control in order to gain access into the movement area. The movement area is a high-speed environment, and for overall safety, no pedestrians or unauthorized vehicles are allowed in this area. If you do cross the boundary line into the movement area, you will automatically have your access badge revoked and you will lose all access privileges. Crossing into the movement area constitutes a Vehicle Pedestrian Deviation, or VPD, which will require an FAA investigation and mounds of paperwork. So please, for your safety and to keep all of your AOA privileges, always stay mindful of the boundary line and never drive or walk into the movement area. Now that we have covered the movement area boundary line, let's discuss the important rules and safety protocol required when operating inside the AOA. Please know that compliance with all rules and regulations is a must in order to maintain your access privileges. Before you enter the AOA, you will see a sign with a list of rules posted next to the badge reader. Note that when inside the AOA, you must give way to all aircraft at all times. You must also keep your speed at or below 15 miles per hour. RMMA's AOA is patrolled by Jefferson County Sheriffs who have the ability to ticket drivers who violate laws or signage. Also, should you have an accident on the AOA, you must notify airport operations and the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department immediately. Once inside the AOA, you should use extra caution for aircraft. This is especially important when driving through hangar rows where there are multiple corner blind spots making it difficult to identify crossing aircraft. A great trick to know if an aircraft is approaching an intersection is to crack a window. Always keep in mind that pilots can have very limiting view from the cockpit. Aircraft such as this tail dragger have an extremely forward limiting view, making it near impossible for some pilots to see your vehicle. 
Many types of aircraft are also unable to make abrupt stops. This is why you must never be in the path of a moving aircraft. You must always give way and ensure that a safe distance is always maintained between you and the aircraft. Keep in mind that this also includes parked aircraft, thus making it unacceptable to drive under any aircraft wings or rotors. Always use caution around aircraft that are running or about to start up. An aircraft that has a red beacon or strobe illuminated on its tail, wings, or belly is about to start. If you see these lights, maintain a safe distance away from the aircraft. When walking or driving behind an aircraft, you should be aware of jet blast or prop wash. The airflow generated by the engines can cause severe damage to vehicles and injure people. During nighttime hours, aircraft can become very hard to see. Many have fewer lights than a car and may not taxi with their landing lights on. You can keep your window open to listen for oncoming aircraft and use extra caution around aircraft wingtips as they can be especially hard to see if the aircraft is off. While in the AOA, you may encounter emergency vehicles, snow equipment, or other types of heavy equipment. You must always give way to emergency equipment. Also, heed caution around other airport equipment as the operator may not be able to see you. When you are inside the AOA, you as well as all airport users have the responsibility to pick up any foreign object debris, or FOD. FOD is any trash, tools, forgotten parts, or anything in the AOA that can potentially damage an aircraft. FOD can destroy engines or even cause the loss of life. The Concorde that crashed in the July of 2000 was the result of FOD that was left lying on the runway. It can be a serious problem and we must all work to keep the airport free of FOD. If you see FOD beyond the movement area boundary line, do not cross the boundary line. Instead, we ask that you call airport operations who will come and retrieve it. When you are parked inside the AOA, always park in designated areas. There are parking areas at the end of most hangar rows and inside the hangar cutouts of porta ports Never park your vehicle in a manner that would hinder the movement of aircraft, such as in the middle of a taxi lane. Also, do not leave vehicles parked at the airport for extended periods of time. The airport will tow any vehicles it deems abandoned. Please contact airport operations if you need to set up any long-term parking arrangements. Lastly, RMMA welcomes pets and please ensure that they are leashed and under your control at all times. The airport is a very dangerous environment for pets and loose pets can create a hazard for aircraft as well as the pet itself. We have finally made it to the conclusion of our access control training video. Throughout the video, we reviewed the requirements to obtain a badge, how to use the airport's gate systems, and the rules and safety regulations required when inside the AOA. You also now know what the movement area boundary line is and understand that if you cross it, you will automatically lose all access privileges. Now we would like to welcome you to our version of Airport Watch. We encourage everybody at Rocky Mountain Metro to take a proactive stand on security. If you see anything amiss, please don't hesitate to contact airport operations or the police if conditions permit. We would like to foster a neighborhood watch style atmosphere here at Rocky Mountain, which encompasses everyone into our own security program. Thank you for participating in this access control training course, and if you're in the terminal, don't hesitate to stop by the operations office and say hello. Also, if you have any questions or need any assistance, please feel free to call us at our 24-hour operations phone at 720-352-0395.